French Open Power Rankings 2023. It is April 18th, and it is time for the first unveiling. Now, new subscribers, viewers who may not remember from last year, uh, the point of this is not for me to basically rank which players I think are the best on clay or which players I think are going to do the best on clay this year. My intention is to leave future casting out of this and to really kind of go off of results and what we've seen in the past. Uh, those results uh, can be recent, not recent, on clay, not on clay. The, subje the subjectivity for me comes into play when I'm deciding what is most important and what is not important. Uh, but in general, I'm, I'm going off of results here. And you might say, well, why don't you do it the other way? Like why we want to know your opinion. So why don't you just, why don't you just do that? Well, if I did that, it would be boring because my opinions don't change that much from week to week to week. What makes the French Open power rankings fun is they do change a lot from week to week to week. This is the same reason why I do not include injured players in the power rankings. It would completely defeat the purpose because it wouldn't really be fair to move them up or down. They would just stay in the same spot and it would be boring. So until you actually come back from your injury, you are not in this. So Rafa won't be included in the April 18th power rankings. Let us begin, starting with the next out players. Francis Tiafo collected a pretty comfortable title in Houston, which unfortunately sabotaged his ability to play in Monte Carlo. His run at Indian Wells was also a very good sign for the clay court season, but in all honesty, he might lose this spot next week after losing to Emil Rusevori today in Barcelona. Karen Hatchinov is eighth in the race and extremely consistent at Roland Garros. Five times he's made the second week in Paris in six appearances. Matteo Berrettini. I'm not sure how bad this latest abdominal injury is. He had to pull out of Monte Carlo. Uh, but the last time he had a full clay court season, which was 2021, he was very good. Cam Norrie. Splashy start to the year, big golden swing, but back-to-back first-round losses in Miami and Monte Carlo. His stock is not very high at the moment, just based off of how he played the last two events. At number 10 comes Taylor Fritz. Extremely small sample size of Fritz on clay since he became a top 10 level player in late 2021. In that sample size, which is three tournaments total, we now have a win over Stefanos Tsitsipas at his best tournament and a Monte Carlo semifinal showing. Fritz is seventh in the race this year, so he gets some respect for his results off clay as well, which lands him at number 10. At number nine is Alexander Zverev. Zverev clearly had a chance to win Roland Garros last year, battling Nadal hard in the semis before the injury. Improvement in 2023, coming back from that injury, that I just mentioned, has been pretty steady, but he has yet to beat a top 20 player this year with two tight losses to Daniil Medvedev on surfaces that really should favor Sasha. At number eight, speaking of the devil, is Daniil Medvedev. It's kind of hard to know where to place him. Monte Carlo was a decent showing, made the quarterfinal. I think there was a lot of fatigue coming into the week for Medvedev and frankly, under preparation on the clay as a whole. Really, I think Medvedev deserves a lot of respect coming into this clay court season just because of what he's done off clay in the lead-up. He leads the race right now, four titles, which leads the tour. At the same time, there's hard evidence that he won't really be able to keep up that pace over the next month and, you know, at Roland Garros because of what clay and how clay diminishes Medvedev's ability to contend for big titles. At number seven is Kaspar Ruud. Even with the Estoril title, Ruud is yet to beat a top 30 player this season. The only reason he lands here is because he has 10 clay court titles since 2020 and made the Roland Garros final last year. At number six is Holger Runa. After the impressive Monte Carlo run to the final, 
Runa is 4-3 and three against top 10 players on clay for his career. He's been really good on the surface ever since winning the Munich title last year, which was his maiden title on the ATP Tour. The drawback for Runa is just the inconsistency that he's shown in 2023 relative to the other players who are above him on this list. You know, it's the reason why he's only 11th in the race right now. So let's see if he can keep having positive weeks leading up to Roland Garros. At number five is Andre Rublev, Monte Carlo champion. Rublev, interestingly enough, if you look at his career statistics, basically equal across all three surfaces. And in general, he's been a mainstay in the top eight, and he's obviously off to a perfect start winning the biggest title of his career. The main thing that hurts him here, the main reason he's not higher, is he's yet to put together a dangerous run at Roland Garros, but even more importantly, at any of the majors for that matter. At number four is Stefanos Tsitsipas. 2021 Roland Garros finalist, two-time Monte Carlo champion, Barcelona finalist, Madrid finalist, Rome finalist, and that's why he's here. There has been nothing encouraging about the last six weeks for Stefanos other than his elbow looking relatively healthy at Monte Carlo. But again, his clay court history is what buoys him and lands him at number four in the power rankings, at least right now. At number three is Yannick Sinner. Another guy who's kind of tough to place, but, you know, recent results are the main factor. He has been awesome since February. Third in the race, Monte Carlo semifinal, which was really as good as you can expect coming off of a Miami final. With only one week rest, it's historically been very difficult for players to play great at Monte Carlo after such a deep run at Miami. So, at the end of the day, for Sinner, my calculus is that I don't weigh last year and prior years as heavily for Yannick as I would for a player like Rublev, who's 25 years old. Because last year is not as reflective, or not very reflective at all, of the player that Yannick Sinner is today. He's a fast-improving 21-year-old, and because of that, I'm weighing heavily his 2023 results and I am devaluing his 2022, his 2021, and his history on clay, other than what he did at Monte Carlo. At number two is Carlos Alcaraz. Alcaraz has played four tournaments this season. Two titles, one runner-up, and a semifinal. Career win percentage on clay is absurd, 79%. Five titles in his career already, including Madrid. Now, withdrawing from Monte Carlo obviously hurt his chances to be number one in this power rankings. If he had played Monte Carlo and he had a very impressive run, he probably would have earned that top spot. But instead, he's going to have to settle for number two. Let's see how he looks in Barcelona. And the fact that he's playing in Barcelona uh, confirms the fact that the physical issues that kept him out of Monte Carlo are not severe, which is good to see. Ultimately, at number one, I do have Novak Djokovic. He and Alcaraz have been equally impressive overall in 2023, uh, but the difference for Novak here is obviously the Roland Garros pedigree. The elbow is the big concern right now, however. Uh, we'll see how he looks uh, this week. Ultimately, I've been saying all year that the Djokovic, Alcaraz, who's the best player in the world question has been really tough to answer given the issues that both of them have had uh, consistently participating. I'm so excited for this clay court season because we're going to see them both playing and hopefully, I mean, knock on wood, both playing. You know, they do need to stay healthy and Djokovic actually has a issue himself right now with the elbow, but it appears he's just going to play through it. Uh, all this to say, I'm excited for Djokovic and Alcaraz to hopefully participate at the same time, actually go head-to-head -head and hopefully answer some questions here. And one of those questions is who will be number one in the French Open Power Rankings come Roland Garros. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.